to check your attitude out. And, you know, I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to be anxious. I'm not going to be mad. No. You have this choice. And that's so awesome. So for me, and and it makes sense to me, and Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you a story here about the hell part. It makes sense to me that we choose to be in God's presence slash heaven. Are we are not all the fullness of heaven or all the fullness of God? Because if we did, and our physical body would go self combust because we could not stand that. Our our physical body could not stand the fullness of God's presence. He's too powerful. But we get we're there and we're able to share part of it. I, I you know, it's just like within us, our body, our blood cells. Mm-hmm. If uh, they would explode too if too much came into that cell. Absolutely. Right? Yes. Or yes. too much fluid or too much. Too much energy. <laughs> like too much, uh, it would explode uh, if too much yes. of some power came into that cell. So that's the way it is with being in the presence of God. It's a choice. I know He's here. I know He's present. With you at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. There's a story there in itself. But back to my story about how I know for sure that hell can be real or heaven can be real. Our purgatory, too. Purgatory is just a place of learning. It's a place of you're going to learn something today, and it may cost you a little pain or it may cost you a little friend, uh, distress, but, but that's what I consider purgatory on earth. But Dad, my dad, was dying, and uh, he was so convinced that he did not know for sure he was going to make it when he died. Here was this good Catholic man that just did, you know, he went to church, he prayed, he did everything he was supposed to do. And yet he had heard the voice, a voice say to him, Clarence, no matter what you do, no matter how much you pray, Clarence, you're in hell. And so he thought that was the devil telling him, Mr., you're not going to make it. And as he lay on his deathbed, he was told three days, he went five. As he lay on his deathbed, no matter what we said, no matter who said it to him, he still was convinced that I'm not for sure. So finally I said, Holy Spirit, the man is not hearing what he needs to hear. What does he need to hear? And immediately comes into my mind the words, Daddy, when did you hear these words that no matter what you did, no matter how much you prayed, you're in hell. Was it before or after Mama died? He says, oh, it's after Mama died. And Daddy, what was your life like? No matter what you did, no matter how much you prayed, no matter what was your life like without Mama? Was it like being in hell? Oh, yes. Well, then, Daddy, that was just your grief. That was your grief given, that was so strong, give being, become a voice within you. That was audible, that Clarence, you're in hell no matter what you do. And he was able to say, oh, okay, and never mentioned it again. And then the neat story that follows up back that I met was I had to leave, go back to Texas. And I said, Daddy, do me a favor. When you die and you make it to heaven, would you come to me in the song of a mockingbird? Well, when he died, he died three days later, two days later, and as we and I came back up and we were at the cemetery, and uh, after everybody gone, I was over at the cemetery gates, and there's this twee twee. <laughs> Is that a mockingbird? And then I walked over to the grave, and the bird flew over with me, and again twee twee, <laughs> and I laughed and I said, "Boy, oh, are you sure lousy for a mockingbird?" And in my heart, I hear the words, what would you expect of a 90-year-old mockingbird? <laughs> and it was his way of telling me I made it. Wow. That's a, I'm home with him. <laughs> that's a beautiful story. Huh? It is It is a true story, too. Oh. Always, uh, we can either... Uh, go ahead, Carl. I said, you always have amazing things happen. It's we, amazing. We, were taking, we were talking yesterday with some folks around the office about uh, encounters with birds that were very special. Uh, <clears throat> Leia of our show, Leave It to Leia, had a hummingbird visit her, which is a particularly uh-huh. good omen because it kept tapping at her window. And even though it's like, sure, the bird's maybe just trying to get through, but it's also, you know, these things bring our attention to a, 
a different level of being. It really snaps us out of our day to day humanness and when uh-huh. we pay attention to the animal world. It's just like us. God is able to reach out and talk to us in many different mysterious ways if we recognize that it's not always, you know, in fact, it's very rarely going to be like the voice in the fiery bush with Moses, you know. We're not going to hear this booming, hey, it's me, God. But we will hear his voice in, through the nature, through the birds. To this day, a mockingbird still is talking to me. Uh, sometimes, like one time I was sitting on the porch, feeling down and out, and here he comes sitting on the post. <laughs> and just calling me, and I said, okay, I get you. You know, pick yourself up and get on out of here with your woe-is-me thoughts. And uh, several other times, there's been a special times in my life where Dad has used the Mockingbird to get his message across to me and let me know that, I, hey, I'm watching over you. It's the same way with God, either through the television, through the uh, signs on the street, like one time I was, we were trying to sell our RV, and... Uh, I was praying, Lord, I really, you know, I've asked you for signs, and you've given me many, many things, and I, I needed another one. And I happened to be passing by a church sign about that time saying, looking for a sign? Here it is. Yes. <laughs> or looking for a sign from God? Here it is. So he speaks to us in many different ways if we're open to the fact that he uses. Like, uh, there's a lot of controversy right now about the movie Noah because it's been uh, produced by an atheist. And there's a lot of Christians out there who are going, oh, don't go see Noah. And I'm going, wait a minute, folks. God spoke to a donkey slash jackass in the Bible, and he also used many, many evil people to do his bidding. And if he can do that, he can use his movie, too, to touch the people who wouldn't even go see a religious movie. Amen. If it wasn't. A... Go ahead. What you're saying? No, no, I said amen. That's exactly how I feel. I'm, I'm very very upset with how some of the Christian community is acting towards this movie. And there's, uh-huh. room, there's room for that, and there's room for God's Not Dead, and there's room for Son of God, and there's room for Heaven is for Real. We need to all be supporting or at least respecting each other's work and not tearing it down and not leading boycotts That's right. and insulting That's right. the of others. And, and to recognize the fact that you don't know how he's going to work, and he, he definitely is going to reach people through that movie. Like I said, uh, to one lady who's on, I said, no, no, maybe they'll come there, watch the movie, and want to go home and read the book. That's, you know, you know the, the, there's a lot of people who, yeah, oh, they, sorry, they see the, the movie, and then they compare it to the book. Yeah, because, you know, um, somebody, somebody on one of my shows had a, a very funny comment where they said, oh, are you saying the movie's better than the book? Which, of course, would be, like, sacrilege, but it was kind of a funny idea. But I said, you know, even if it's not completely 100% letter by letter, uh, accurate, um, then uh, uh, the the overall message of the movie is still good. And the thing is that it's so well done and so exciting with the, the animals and the battles of people fighting to, to ride on the ark from the outside world, things like that, that I guarantee that there are probably tons of 12-year-old boys out there that would be like, oh, Bible study again, that are like going to see this movie and going, oh, that's awesome, maybe I'll read the Bible. Mm-hmm. Somebody yeah. commented that very thing on my uh, Facebook that they went and saw the movie, and it, and they talked about the things that wasn't necessarily in or out of the Bible, but the son goes home and opens up the Bible to read it. Hello, so yeah. to read the Noah story. Yep. Yeah. So it's doing its purpose. Yeah, I think I think that they were doing something good. It's just a different, a uh, little different approach. So, so be it. I mean, the way I put it, um, I wrote a big essay about it for um, for a Catholic uh, uh, website. And I said, um, hey, look, you know, who are we to complain about the different ways the story gets told uh, as long as the attention and the final uh, effect is good? Because <laughs> it took four different people to get the whole story of the main character right in the Bible. You know, the four Gospels. I, I got to tell you what thoughts are coming into my mind because I know they're coming straight from the Holy Spirit and God. There are people going to complain how I chose the stable to have my son born. <laughs> yeah. That I, you know, they're going to complain one way or the other. There are people who are going to complain that that's not the way you should do it. Yeah. And of course, we. I'm sorry, but there are so many Christians, good, good Christians, that are out there not realizing how you are doing the devil's work because you are tearing something down, which is essentially judging. Yeah. And we were told not to do that. Yeah. 
and and even the fact that they're tearing each other's the different churches down too. Uh, like I saw a YouTube thing. Then you can go click this on uh, Kenneth Copeland and slash Pope uh, video to Kenneth Copeland and see what I'm talking about. Beautiful, beautiful how he sends his video to this whole con- conference of uh, pastors of Kenneth Copeland's. And the other day I happened to look up something, and I see there was a bunch of videos, but some of them were con. They were not, you know, saying, oh, look, this is awesome. Some of them were going, well, Kenneth Copeland's a her- uh, her- heretical, a anyhow, heresy, what do you want to call it? He, they're, that group of church is nothing but a bunch of heretics. And I'm going, son, uh, wait a minute. Hey, you're supposed to be a Christian? Don't you know whose work you're doing when you do something like that? And why are you doing it to begin with? Why are you trying to prove that some other church is not as good as you? I mean, it's just not God. That's all there's to it. And it's sad. And it's one of the reasons why so many people are going, who needs Christianity? When there's a bunch of people out there just, you know, bunch like siblings, like brothers and sisters, always fighting with each other or putting each other down. And it's sad. Okay, I want to get back to somebody in that studio. I want you to tell the story about how your life, at some point in time or another, you felt like, if you weren't in hell, you were pretty close to it. Start it up. You mean like a worst moment in life or something physically? Yeah, worst moment in life where you thought, man, it can't get any worse than this. Uh, or yeah. you really felt like, uh, God, I, where are you? Where are you? Um, and you felt like you were in hell. Because isn't that what hell is? Yeah. The absence of love or God in your life. That's that's how some people interpret it. That they, that they, they say that maybe it won't even be lakes of fire it'll be eternally being away from the presence of god and yet getting to see the happiness of those that are in his presence that's it exactly yeah. that's it exactly but, uh um, what is far a description of far something that burns yeah. consumes sure. uh, painful so maybe you know we can't always think in terms of a burning fire as being actual okay. physical fire but the emotional fire that's with inside that you cannot quench. Like a grudge. And I know there's... Huh? Like a grudge. Yeah. A grudge would, would be the perfect uh, you know, sort of uh, example of that. Yeah, things that don't, yeah. Uh, anger that you don't let go is a grudge. Yeah. You're saying that that's an example of that. Right. That's it. That's it. And, and then when we have become so hardened that we can no longer let go that we're hurt, so hurt. And I feel so sorry for children who are born innocent in this world and then have been so abused that they got, they become hardened. They, they, the psychologists say they do this disassociation thing where they separate themselves, their mind separates themselves from that terrible, awful stuff, and they become uh, something that is a fake. But then that emotion and that hate is still there, and that you know the the bad, oh, like the, uh, the negative emotions are still there, which causes them the to fear, in turn the, lash out yeah. when they're triggered. It's yeah. sad. It really is sad. Yeah. It's it's okay. definitely sad when it happens to kids. I, I I just want to comment and you know agree with you on that because you know they 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 come into this world with you know not not much of a you know, sort of a experience prior to that. And, and they do have that experience in their consciousness, but, you know, with all the negativity that is, you know, bashed at them at such a young age, they're not able to uh, sort of develop a, a consciousness uh, to, 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 to raise it. And so, therefore, I think, um, you know, the, the more you hold... Like a grudge is, I guess, what you would say, holding on to a grudge is being as far away from being conscious as you can be. And so, in in uh-huh. essence, it is hell. Yeah, very, very much like it. Uh, another phrase that is used is heaven slash promised land. And is the promised land the same as heaven? And we're going to the promised land, or, you know, new people associate the promised land as entering into, uh, well, it comes from the Bible where you're talking about the Egyptians going over the, Red Sea into the Promised Land, first, and right? some refer to that as heaven too. But you know, someday we're going to be in that Promised Land. 
But there again, look at the words, promised land. Can somebody see where I'm, where I'm going to go with this? Well, I'm not sure because when I, when I hear...